Thank you, Leanne. A tenth woman has now come forward with accusations of sexual harassment by Governor Andrew Cuomo. Sherry Ville from the Rochester suburb of Greece spoke this afternoon with her attorney, Gloria Allred, during a virtual news conference. Ville says Cuomo came into her home in 2017, went in town to survey flood damage. It was there that she says the governor pulled her toward him and kissed her on both cheeks in what she called a, quote, highly sexual manner. She says he also stayed behind the rest of his staff when they left her home and kissed her once again. He then leaned down on top of me and while still holding one of my hands, he for forcibly grabbed my face with his other big hand and kissed my cheek. Again, in a very aggressive manner. I felt like I was being manhandled. Mrs. Ville provided photos and videos of the event in question that were taken by family members, some of whom witnessed at, and uh, at least one of the interactions with the governor. Well, the governor's lawyer put out a statement tonight saying that he believes kissing and hugging strangers is a normal greeting. Cuomo has also said in the past that he does this because of his Italian heritage. His lawyer even sent the media photo galleries of times Cuomo hugged or kissed people. We asked an expert if they felt this is a valid excuse. Regardless of how he was raised, this is a new day and a new age, and you have to be more self-aware. And you have to say to yourself, I'm not going to hug anyone today because it might be viewed as a hug versus a hug. And any woman who's been hugged knows the difference. You can read about the other nine accusers and where the impeachment trial stands on WGRZ.com. Well, tonight we're also hearing from someone who says he was a victim of sexual harassment by a state government official in order to get his perspective on the recent allegations against the governor and the issue of retaliation. Channel 2's Ron Plant spoke with him. These are usually people that hold a great deal of power over someone, so that's a very realistic fear that somebody would have. Elias Farah is a private practice attorney in Buffalo who says he knows firsthand about a fear of retaliation, which was cited by attorney Gloria Allred. And they feared that if she made what happened to her public, that the governor might use his power to retaliate against her. Not only is it going to affect them, but it's going to affect their family. It's going to affect their business. It's going to affect their career prospects. You know, all of these are factors when we look at somebody coming forward. Farah helped form the Sexual Harassment Working Group in Albany, which advocates for change in state government. He says his particular case occurred while working for a former female state lawmaker, and he testified about it in 2019 before state senators. He notes a politician may have other insiders go on the attack against a victim on his or her behalf. It could be their attorneys going to the media. It could be their attorneys saying something negative about them or their business or you know, anything else in their lives. It could be uh, other people who, who work there. And then you also have, um, you know, these people who are supporters. The person that's being accused uh, almost comes forward and, and puts them out themselves out there like they're the victim. Um, but it's, it's such a typical harasser playbook where, you know, essentially you flip the narrative, you uh, essentially shame the victim. Cuomo's first accuser, Lindsay Boylan, claims that happened to her. And the legal defense for an elected official? A lot of times I don't think the taxpayers know um, that this retaliation and defense of, of these type of things is actually paid for by the taxpayers. Uh, and it will be paid for by the taxpayers kind of as long as it goes on. Ron Plants, Channel 2 News.